Hi there, welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. For any type of photography, two things are essential, camera and lens. Deep sky astrophotography is no exception. So let's talk about the camera today. Deep sky targets are always very, very dim. So dim that we can barely see them even with the help of a telescope. A more scientific term for dim is low signal noise ratio or low SNR. Attention here, SNR is the most important term in astrophotography because everything we do, going to dark sites, tracking, guiding, filters, stacking, etc. are all used to increase the SNR of our targets on the image. Of course, Mathematically, there are two ways to increase a ratio. You can either increase the numerator signal or decrease the denominator noise. Let's start with the most popular camera, DSLR. It has a very obvious problem, filter. The infrared filter on DSLR usually blocks the most important band parts for astrophotography, h alpha. Needless to say, this is a huge minus on the signal side. That's why, for a lot of astrophotographers, the first upgrade is to get their DSLR modified or have a DSLR built for astrophotography use, like Canon's 60DA. Next challenge is the thermal noise. That's the voltage fluctuation on the camera sensor. It gets worse when temperature increases. The solution for that is a cooled camera. Let me show you a comparison here. I'm using the exact same everything. One is taken with cooling disabled, around 20 degrees Celsius. The other is cooled to minus 15 degrees Celsius. No need to say anything else, right? Of course, we can reduce average thermal noise by taking dark frames, but without temperature control, it's almost impossible to take darks at the same temperature as we shoot the light frames. Not to mention, the temperature could change a lot during the night for light frames itself. So cooled cameras provide not only cooling, but also temperature control, which largely reduces thermal noises. Now, once you start to shop around for cooled cameras, there are two big choices you should make. Number one, either CCD or CMOS. Number two, either monochrome or color cameras. Between CCD and CMOS, their biggest technical difference is, at the end of each exposure, CCD reads electrical charges of every single pixel from a central readout device while CMOS has readout electronics for each pixel. This difference makes CMOS much cheaper and popular. The latest CCD chips on the astrophotography market were released at least 10 years ago, which means this road has almost come to an end. No new technologies in the past 10 years was applied to any CCD today. On the CMOS side, however, it keeps evolving. New chips were released every year. When you buy a CMOS astrophotography camera today, you can be assured it's something like an iPhone X, not an iPhone 3G. To give you a more technical and operational perspective, CCD has a higher readout noise, around 5 to 10 times higher than CMOS. Since readout noise was triggered upon completion of each exposure. CCD camera users are obliged to make longer exposures, 5 minutes minimum. Sometimes it can be as long as 30 minutes for one single exposure. That needs a lot of patience and luck, cause a lot of things could happen, like a sliver of cloud, someone flashed their headlight, or simply a hiccup of the guiding. If I'm taking two minute subs, I just lose two minutes for each of the bad luck events. But 
If I'm taking 30 minute subs, I lose half an hour. For sure, CCD still has its pros, like lower thermal noise and being more sensitive. From the SNR point of view, CCD and CMOS don't really have much difference, though integration time for CCD is generally much longer. So if you really care for your wallet, I would say CMOS camera is a good start. As for the choice number two between monochrome and color camera, it's tougher. For each pixel of a color camera, it has a filter on it, either R or G or B. Every four neighboring pixels form a group, and these four pixels will go through a process called a debayer and output a uniform color and brightness signal. But for monochrome camera, every single pixel will deliver its own brightness signal. But of course, there's no color. So it's quite obvious that the resolution of monochrome camera is better than colored ones. Also, if you want to do backyard astrophotography and you live in a light polluted area, monochrome camera with narrowband filters will be an ideal solution. But there's a catch. Monochrome camera needs filters to take colored pictures. Filter wheel and filters will definitely cost more. And as you spend more money on it, you will still spend more time on taking subs because you probably need to redo focusing after each filter change. And that's a big headache if you don't have a motorized focuser. There's powerful filters on the market to save you some time, but still, that means a bigger budget. What was my choice? Well, I started astrophotography with a Canon 5D Mark II camera. No modification. Two years ago, I made a decision to get a cooled monochrome CMOS camera, the most popular ASI 1600 MMC, which I believe still remains the most popular deep sky camera till now. I was very happy with it. Last year, I also bought a colored CMOS camera, ASI 294 MC Pro. I had some great shots with this color camera during my trip to New Mexico and Texas dark sites. Then I found myself using the monochrome camera much more for backyard sessions. Let's wrap up. Stock DSLR camera is a good start for astrophotography, but to enhance the SNR, you should at least modify it to afford more pass rate for the HRFR band. If you want to enhance SNR further, cooled CCD or CMOS camera is a great choice. While CCD cameras are older and more expensive, CMOS cameras are more affordable and requires 5 to 10 times less subframe exposure. Monochrome cameras provide you with more flexibility for narrowband imaging and better resolution. But more expensive as you should also consider filters, filter wheels, and a motorized focuser. While colored cameras yield faster results, but quite limited for backyard use. All in all, it's definitely not an easy choice, but I hope you found this video helpful. That's it for today. See you next time.